One of the questions that came up uh, last month, we had an extended discussion of, of backups. And um, actually, both of the talks we have upcoming, this and Alex's after me, are about some of the tools that may provide some answers for some aspects of your backups. So Git Annex is something that I've been watching off and on for years. Actually, it was developed by Joey Hess, who used to be one of the uh, chief Debian developers. So he was heavily involved with the development of, of the apt-get system. And he took a couple of years to um, look for sponsorship and got people to sponsor him. Hey, a few bucks here, a few bucks there. Added up to a couple of years of steady work working on adding functionality to Git Annex. The point of, well, the question is, well, what is it? Um, we've got a URL here, which can point you to the website that is quite good, and actually part of the Git repo, too. Um, it is an annotated Git repository. So we start with a Git repository that has all the crunchy goodness of it can capture versions of files, and it has tools for, well, it's got places to store data. And what Git Annex does is it provides, as a supplement to this, a way of storing files alongside the repo uh, without actually needing to check them in. And this gets this is one of the way, things that gets us around the two gig uh, file size limit um, that I think people are people are agonizing over a fair bit with uh, with regards to Git and uh, and so forth. Um, big files are sometimes a problem, and if you'd like to capture large files, well, that's this issue. There are some famous use cases. There's Bob the Archivist is characterized by the project. Bob has disk drives all around his house. He's got disk drives everywhere. He wants to archive data on them. Many of them are kept offline. We can't expect all of the, all of the material to be available all the time. You can't actually expect there to be one repository that contains all of the data. Git Annex tells him where his files are. Let's hope the drives are at least labeled somewhat. Otherwise, you, you, you figure out, oh, it's, it's on disk 72, but I didn't write numbers on them, so I don't know which one is number 72. But, Another case is Alice the Nomad. She's always on the move. She's got her trusty netbook and a terabyte drive that uh, she carries the, her most important files on. She's going to have to have some supplemental, supplemental data around. So she's going to have USB sticks, maybe communicate some of this into the cloud. She has a server on the net that she talks to. Again, Git Annex tells her where her files are. She can add and drop files while she's offline, and they'll just get synchronized later. Maybe automatically, maybe it, it may need some manual effort, a little bit of a kick, but uh, often without. There's Chris the Viewer. This is the less famous case. This is more characteristic of my scenario. I've got a ch an aging, cheap, six terabyte RAID array, and I'm disliking the strictures of RAID. It's like, there's the concern that if, if something goes wrong, there's lots of ways that this data can just go poof. And the cheap appliances just in some, in some ways get worse as the technology improves. I've got a newer server with just a bunch of disks. And what, um, what happens here is I expressly wanted to get something RAID-like, but not RAID. 
I've got redundancy by having a bunch of disk drives. Let's copy things around so that we make sure we've got multiple copies. We'd like to have some redundancy. Uh, a little bit of redundancy can go a long way on some things. Hey, my ebook collection is small in terms of aggregate size, so having a copy of it everywhere is pretty convenient. So there's, there's a number of sort of different use cases that fall out of this. How does it all work? Well, Git gets used to track the file names and the metadata, including file checksums. So we get a reliability enhancement that you can, you can be certain that, you've, that your data has not aged away. There is a way of automatically having it check the checksums every so often so that you know that your drive hasn't turned to crud and your files haven't gone poof. Um, names of, of remote locations and what files are on which remote locations. and In a sense, everything is a remote location. Uh, the file content gets captured in the directory, the subdirectory .git slash annex with then underneath it, it's got hexadecimal names based on checksums. Um, so it's a little bit, it's a little unreadable, but nevertheless deterministic. And this, this allows it to scale to have a lot of files in the, in the repository. Now, and what you generally have is a sim link from your original file name to the link sitting under git annex. And what's actually in there usually is locked down to be extremely read-only. So you don't get to delete it by accident. It's fairly difficult to delete. This implies as a principle, if we're thinking about backups in general, git annex is not particularly suited for handling mutable data. And it's a question I had. I was I wanted to connect Caliber, an ebook reader, directly to my Git Annex repository and have it manage things and discovered that's not really quite ideal because one of the things Git uh, one of the things Caliber would like to do is to change the metadata on the publications uh, to indicate, hey, has this book been read? Um, how many times has, has it been read? Am I up to 80% read on certain books or wh what have you? Various metadata it wants to change and Git Annex isn't very happy about that. So I'm essentially using Git Annex as a place where the authoritative copies of things go and then Caliber checks things out from there. There's various kinds of settable policy so automatically Git Annex will handle how much redundancy do you want. The notable thing that you'd, you'd want to have is, well, policies around how many copies you want to have of something. Now, if you only have one, uh, one repository instance, you have no choice. There's no more than one copy of anything. But supposing you've got five servers kicking around, you might want to make sure that you have at least two copies across the five servers and that way they none of them are holding on to all of the eggs nothing things are not in just one basket but well maybe you want a more maybe you want more than two copies for your crucial for your photograph collection if somebody's a professional photographer they may want the, the many copies of their photographs or for the, pro for the professional materials, they want high redundancy, but then there's the stuff that they're just scrubbing through and it's, hey, some, some stuff can have, well, you can have varying policies. Um, Git Annex FSCK will run checks against the checksums automatically or by command. And over time, well, okay, well, 
Git Annex supports a large number of different kinds of remotes. A remote is a node where data is stored. Now the, the nominal case is that of a Git repository. And you need at least one Git repository and you probably want Git repositories whenever possible. But there's a whole bunch of things that got built as add-ons over the course of time. Hey, Joey got two years worth of sponsorship and people kept asking for, let's have some more things. Let's store things in Amazon S3. Encrypted, you'd like, you'd like stuff going out into the cloud to be encrypted. Um, Amazon Glacier, and that one's really weird. There's the, the rules for that are, it's good for capturing archival data. You can't quickly get copies out of it. So it might take hours for you to pull data out. It's very, very strange. BUP is a system for doing backup via Git pack files. By the way, if, if people are thinking about broader questions of backups, these are all, these are all things you should probably also look at. They're pretty good ideas too. There, DDAR is a deduplicating archiver. Gcrypt is a Git repo where everything is encrypted in the repo. So you run this on a hosting service that you don't trust that much. All right, so you've got a hosting service in the US and you don't trust the tender administrations of somebody else's government. So encrypt on its, it's, it's, in, it's not encrypted in Canada, but it's encrypted somewhere else. A directory, perhaps on a removable drive. Uh, I was fighting with this one today and had little success. The, the thing I would like to do with this is to have my music collection have the original copies are in a nicely backed up Git Annex repository and then I and then I synchronize them against my music player. Um, well, I think it, it expects that the file system has POSIXy uh, goodness and VFAT is pretty typical on music players. So some of that doesn't work. It can sync using rsync. Uh, RebDAV, that probably is a misspelling of WebDAV. I'm pretty sure that's WebDAV. ADB I was trying to use this afternoon and, and, and I think I don't have a new, they, they've, I don't have a new of enough version of Git Annex because that one's been changing heavily over the last month in the, uh, in the home Git repository. Tejo LAFS, I'd never heard of it. Uh, www is interesting, you can, if you, want to archive material from a website and treat that and, and have copies of that. That's interesting. BitTorrent, you can do a download only thing where your annex is pulling from your favorite synchronized torrents. Um, there's Tor. You might be talking to your Git Annex nodes via the Tor protocol. XMPP was a hot thing a couple years ago. It's now deprecated because what people tended to want it for was as a proxy to go find your files somewhere else and Tor was actually the what they really wanted. And I've already commented on encryption. So it's usually it's encrypted. Um, usually it's it's private key encryption, single, single key, um, not, not generally GPG because, well, it's, you don't entirely trust. GPG has the web of trust. Well, this is your data. It's your, it's your trust that's involved. So your favorite secret key. There's a number of ways that the workflow works. So from, uh, from friendliest to least friendly. So, well, least friendly is basically it, it behaves just that you have, you type in the commands, 
as you would if you're managing your source code in Git. So git annex add some files, git annex, uh, git commit. Um, push, pull, well that's just sync. Uh, sync is what you do with git annex. This will cause it to go and talk to all of the repositories that are visible. Um, and well, if you do with no, without dash dash content, this just syncs the metadata. So this is the catalog of uh, the, the index of what material you've got. Dash dash content actually will copy your books, your documents, your videos, your music what have you. There's git annex watch is a daemon that will automatically check things in for you. Um, you can ignore things via git ignore and well essentially you don't need to run git annex at to put things into your repository. There is an assistant which was part of the work that uh, uh, that Joey did during his first year of uh, of sponsored work. The assistant is a daemon that runs in the background to do, well, more stuff. And then he added a web user interface that's quasi the GUI. And I've got that running on my desktop it's at the office and it's, it's nice. It gives me an idea as to what's going on. Um, what it isn't, Git Annex is not a backup system, but in that it makes copies of things in a well-arranged way. If the policies that you have are useful for the backup of the kinds of files that are congruent, then this is a piece of a backup system. It's not a file system or a Dropbox clone. Although, if you're running the assistant, it looks a lot like it is. It, it does behave a fair bit like Dropbox. It's not Unison. Unison has as, as a difference that it expects all of the files to be somewhere. You might choose to omit some from one repository or another, but something's going to be authoritative. Whereas um, well, like location tracking means that all of the all of the Git Annex repositories can be fragmentary. You might only have ten percent of your material on any given node. Um, Unison expects a hundred percent probably needs to be somewhere. It's not a folder mirroring system, although it cop it copies stuff around. So there's there's some similarities. It's not formally a distributed file system like BitTorrent. It's not Git Media. Git Media is probably the most nearly similar thing that there is. Uh, that w might be more attuned to your video and music collections. And it's not BOR. BOR is a system that wants to version your media files, which seems strange to me. It's, okay, we have today's version of this episode of X-Files and tomorrow's version of this episode of X-Files. Makes my head spin. But it's, Git Annex doesn't do the, the versioning, so there's very legitimate reason to want to use Git for some of you, for the stuff that looks like code, Git for the stuff that looks like, like it needs to be versioned. You want to track the versions of configuration over time, use Git directly for that. Well, by the way, since this is using a Git repo, you've got that for free as well. So you can have that. You've got a perfectly usable Git repo and you can add files and use the usual Git commands to pull and push and cherry pick and all that jazz. Although changing branches probably breaks my head. I don't want to think about changing branches. But, well, there's what it's, it isn't. There is the extent of what I've looked up, and well, I'm, I'm using I'm using it at the um, I'm, I'm using I've not been using Git Annex Watch, but I've been using all of these other pieces. Um, 
I have, I'm only using the base Git repo as the storage um, mechanism. I've played with some of the others and had mixed results. So it's a, um, it's not particularly easy to use other, other storage targets. But well, it's pretty good as what it is. And yeah, and there's my use case. Questions? Um, you said there's a lot of different special remotes. What's the protocols it's using for its default for getting files between? Um, SSH? SSH, yeah. SSH is what, uh, well, you forget you, you tend to have the choice. SSH and there is the Git's own, the, the Git protocol which I'm not sure exactly what that is. It's more or less, more or less HT, HTTP or something-ish. Yeah, it, it tends to be speaking as, around my network it's, it's, using, uh, it's using SSH to, uh, to bump files around, so it's presumably SCP. Follow-up question. Uh, failure modes, uh, because it can be fragmentary and doesn't keep the files, what happens when you finally lose some of those files? Does it complain that it's just not there and not give you a way to re remove the knowledge oh, yeah. of it? No, you can re you can remove not you can drop the you can uh, you can drop knowledge of it. So you say, okay, I lost that disk, and so I've lost my photographs from 2013 and yeah it's well you you'll be aware that you can be at least made aware that okay it's all the pictures from 2013 oh crap my work from that year is gone so, but yes you can then remove them and go on with life with less of your stuff could you rebuild such a uh, archive? So, archive you die, I know it's everywhere else. Can I just all I get in and just rebuild that? Well, supposing it's just one copy that's gone away. If if one copy has gone away, there is no problem. It's it, it may be it may be sufficient to just run do 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 run get annex assistant. And it says, oh, oh dear, uh, well, mark the drive as dead, or mark that remote as dead. It's gone, and it says, oh no, you only have, you only have one copy of your photographs from 2013. They're over here on remote number, uh, on, on disk seven. Let me go make some copies. So if the data is not actually lost, nothing is lost. You're, you are you are in a happy place. It will just hap It can happily copy it to somewhere else. Maybe if you're choosing, maybe it's you may leave it non-deterministic as to where it makes the copies. But you you could ask it to sync to a particular place. Um, how much time do you find yourself administering the system? When I add new books, I git uh, git annex add and commit and sync and forget. So, if I had the watcher running, more universe. I generally don't have the watcher running. I I got accustomed to this tool set when it was when I first started using it. I'm I less use these. I trust them less. So it's, it's a little bit of manual work. It's, well, it's the bit of manual work of, oh, there's new material, I need to expressly add it. Just like if you have new configuration, if you've got new dot files in your home directory and you want to add them to your favorite Git repository, you've got to do a bit of manual work to put them someplace where, uh, where your repository will be apprised of them. It's that work. That work I have, it's pretty nominal. I have a similar problem.
I have a similar problem, but not identical. I have a lot of stuff in Git, and I want to keep it in synchronization between GitLab, GitHub, and my local machine. But it isn't blobs outside of Git, it's stuff that's inside Git. Is there, is there another offering out there somewhere that addresses that class of problem? I'd like to have free copies, please. I wonder, well, that sounds, actually, that sounds a lot like, and I, I make, I'm making this up, mm -hmm. this sounds like BUP. Ah, okay. Backup via git pack files. So if maybe the answer for that, and is, this is a, you'll, I, I say you need, you need to research that. Yeah. And given that that's a hard problem, given that a Git repository may have many branches and many, many branches and many versions. So synchronizing the branches is going to be something of an issue. I think that's, that's going to be more, that's an additional problem that, well, Git oh, Annex is, Git Annex is more or less versionless. Yes. Um, it makes no attempt to solve that problem. So I think I've, I, I, with Git Annex, I have no pro no answer to offer you on that. But I wonder if BUP is perhaps a thing. Um, but I think part of the big part of the big problem there will be getting enough metadata to know which versions you're interested in tracking. So you've got the set of branches on node on in repo one in GitLab over here and in GitHub over there and and so forth, keeping those synchronized without having an all singing, all dancing, giant ball of mud that's in the, the in the middle. It, it may be that what you get as a result is a ball of mud that is the union of all of the branches and all of the patches, and that may be something hateful. <laughs> I'm, but I'm making that up. Away. Um, one of my classic uh, problems that I throw at any kind of system like this is um, you have two primary places you do your, your work and add files to, and you add uh, location A slash foo, and you'll add location B slash foo, and they're different files, but the path names are the same. And then you go to sync, and you've got a merge conflict, because both are different. One is yes. newer than the other, but they are not, they may be binary files, so they're not mergeable. Yeah. I have satisfactorily avoided that particular problem. And this isn't a versioning system, so it doesn't try and s provide a deep solution to that. Um, but it seems like you can get yourself into that you situation. Could get, you could get into that situation. I have not. Um, I'm not sure what you do if you if you're if you are falling into that problem. Is there a documentation section? on Git Annex that covers those kind of issues? Maybe. Okay, you haven't uh, had to check? That's, okay. I have, I'd have to check. Okay. I'd have to check. There's, Thank you, Chris. There's, a, there's some decent documentation, but it's, a, uh, it's, it's decent-ish, but it's a little bit terse. So, yeah. More questions? Thank you very much.